Okay. That's interesting. Okay, so um, <clears throat> what about if other people say negative things to you? Well, yeah, you, 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 make, you, you make them meaningless. Like if someone says to me, you're stupid or something, then um, actually, you know, only, the only time I would be worried about someone saying stupid to me is if I projected they were special. Like if a tramp caught in the street says to me, you're stupid, I would ignore it. You know, it wouldn't make sense. Like if, a, if someone with a, you know, like if I go into, the thing I often share is like doctors in medical situations, because they're wearing a white coat and they, and they think the statistics, because you project specialness onto them, it's almost like godlike qualities, you become receptive to being programmed by them. But even like a tramp says to me, you're stupid, I'll, I'll forget it within a, it's meaningless to me. Tramp, you know, what do you know about whether I'm stupid or not? So, you know, that. So, like, uh, so, so you make the, the person meaningless, the words they say meaningless, the context of the social situation or thing meaningless. And it's great, you know, transcendence work is fun because you get to get that person trigger you over and over again. And, you know, because that's how life works. And then you get to do your spiritual work, you know, or you the, I'm going to see them again next week. So, so the word, you know, like, let's say John calls me stupid every time I meet John, you know, in this place once a week. And I go, okay, so I, so I cancel my belief John is meaningful. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief the word stupid is meaningful. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I cancel my belief his vocal tone is meaningful uh, and his facial expressions are meaningful. I'm an infinite being subject. I cancel my need to identify with anything he says or does or any behaviour he has. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. I have a photo of John. I look at John. John is just as meaningless as the mug, who's just as meaningless as the pillow, who's just as meaningless as the plant. So I'm doing all of this stuff. I'm putting John into God's infinite light and love and praying for a miracle. Uh, I'm feeling my feelings, you know, it's time to see John, let me go into the observer and stay being in the observer while I'm with John and not attached to anything he says or does. Um, so I'm doing this and I go, okay, last time he said I'm stupid, I was triggered 10 out of 10. After a week of work, I'm only triggered 5 out of 10. He said the stupid to me again. So, okay, I'll meet him next week, I'll do the work again. And then, you know, he'll say the word stupid. One week I'll go there and say, you're stupid. And I go, I didn't register it, didn't have any effect. You know, it meant nothing. Like nothing, you know, nothing happened. In fact, you didn't even notice he said it. <clears throat> In fact, when you get to, when you transcend something, you don't notice it any longer. That's what 100% transcendence is. It's like, there was a time, if there was a donut on the table, I would, that would be the only thing I'd remember from the group. I wouldn't remember what anybody had said. I'd be staring at the donut, and if anyone said what happened in there, there was a donut on the table. That was it. <laughs> that would be it. And then, if you fully transcend donuts, someone can leave a plate of donuts on, and you don't notice they're there. It's like the group, when it was a lovely group, lots of lovely people, lots of lovely conversation, lovely group. And, so, and then you didn't notice there was donuts on the table. That's 100% transcendence. Because when you transcend something, it doesn't block your experience of being in the holy instant. You're just experiencing the bliss of now. And that limited ego that wants to track things as being important dissolves. So when you fully transcend something, you know, it's gone. When you practice, um, when you practice, you know, like with the observer, I think the observer is a great thing because you're practicing being the observer of the thing and then being the detached observer of the thing. Like if you go to being the observer of time, or the detached observer of time, time ceases to exist for you. Yeah. If you go into, like there's a donut on the table, go into the observer and the observer of that, the donut will disappear. You know? So time, time disappears when there's no tracking of time. If you stop tracking donuts as being important or special, then you live in a world of donut, a donutless world. It's funny, but you don't notice them any longer. You know? So, but what is special, you notice. You know? And actually, when you let, if you go to the observer of noise, you go into silence. When you stop tracking noise, you go into silence. So you don't register sound, because you start to go... And the Course in Miracles describes... Everyone who's done spiritual work will probably know what I'm talking about. It says something like the hush of heaven. 
Does anyone know the Course in Miracles, the Hush of Heaven? It's like you, you're in when you're in states of bliss or in those flow states, like I'll walk down Bond Street or Oxford Street and it'll be like peace, absolute silence and heavenly bliss. And then if you're a bit disconnected and you walk down, like everyone's bumping into you, there's noise everywhere, cars are roaring, that little infant is screaming. And it's like, and the hush of heaven is not there. So it's exactly, you know, one is like you're tracking your ego, you're in your ego, and you're picking up everything, and everything's meaningful. And the other is like you're in the observer. You're in the, it's like there's silence in Oxford Street. There's the hush of heaven in Oxford Street, even in the, the midst of everything. So it's not the world. The world has got nothing that can, can take you out of being, being in infinite stillness and peace. It's your, being in your ego and making things meaningful that is taking you out. Because, you know, in the infinite now, in the holy instant, time does not exist. Of course, miracles say that, you know, beyond time, beyond form. So what is the thing that tracks form and time and all limits? The ego. So when you dissolve the aspect of the ego, which is hooking in to something it's making meaningful, it ceases to exist for you. You go into the infinite now, you go into the times now, you go into oneness. You know, it's the ego that creates that sense of separation and starts to, like for one person, you know, one person will sit, you know, like we could have like 10 people sitting in this room and, and like one person is experiencing just silence in the hush of heaven. For another person, they're totally irritated and finding everybody like annoying. For another person, they're just like, you know, um, I don't know what, you know, if there was donuts, they'd wish to remember the donuts or whatever it is. So actually, it's not the room. It's not the donuts. It's not what anybody's saying. It's just that, is your ego having a special relationship with that thing? Otherwise, you know, sometimes another person can come to this room and say it was just bliss, nothing, nothing happened. That's a joke with enlightened teachers. You know, they say nothing's actually happening. You'll know that joke. If you, you, what they mean, nothing is actually happening, is an event can only happen if you track it. Does that make sense? An event only happens if you track it. And if you, had, if you tracked no events, nothing is happening. You know, uh, if you, you, well, just keep practicing with the observer and the Course in Miracles, and you'll see that when you let go of something completely, you, don't tr you start to track it less and less. Does that make sense? You notice it less and less. And then sometimes when you completely let something go, a thing that used to really upset you, you no longer experience it. I used to be in 12-step, I used to go to 12, I still go to 12-step meetings, and there'd be people who'd irritate me in those meetings. And every time I'd go and I'd see that person, they'd irritate me, and I'd go, oh my God, that person's in the room. So, so, so it'd be like, and then I'd do the work on them, and I'd go, you know, okay, I'll write step 10, I'll pray for a miracle, see them differently, I'll, I'll annoy my sponsor with how annoying this person is. And then after a while, you know, that same person that used to annoy me will be in the room and I won't notice they were there. And it's like, it's, what a wonderful meeting this is. It's all peaceful and nothing's happening in this meeting. And what, all that happened was that I let go of them being a distraction to me, if that makes sense. So actually every meeting, every place you go is peaceful and serene. The only, pla only when you go to a place and it's not peaceful and serene is because you haven't transcended something in that room yet. So if you keep going back to that room and transcend that thing, and that was the only thing that triggered you, the next time it'll be a peaceful room, you see. So every room is peaceful. 